Welcome back, boys and girls. I know that I have at least one female fan out there, so I'm going to be calling you all boys and girls from now on. And what we're doing today is a guide for the Crusader class, and we're doing the Seeker of the Light or the Blessed Hammer build video. Now check him out, he just looks awesome. I love this armor set, it looks absolutely amazing. I think it's incredibly detailed. I love the candles on his helm and on his shoulders there, and they remain lit the whole time, it's amazing. Anyway, enough talking crap. Let's go into some gameplay and check out what the Crusader does with this Seeker of the Light Blessed Hammer build. So we're just doing the regular Nephilim Rift here. And as you can see, Pretty goddamn powerful, boys. Pretty goddamn powerful. Uh, once you get used to regenerating your wrath and surviving, this is really, really OP. I'm actually really impressed with this build and with this set. The key is wrath regeneration, cooldown reduction, and definitely survivability. So I'm using Unity at the moment for extra survivability. It is a bit squishy, this build, especially if you're going like Torment 13 and if you're going for greater rifts. But he, he, he just kills Elite so damn easy, like he just saw me down that Elite like nothing. Like nothing. And if your time ability is right, you should really pretty much never run out of breath either. Let's kill maybe one more pack and head into town, you guys can see how good it works. It's just, it's just new shit. Get to teleport, fucking awesome. Let's go to town and talk about the gear and shit. You guys get what happens with this first hammer. Let's go to town. So what y'all saw there was me doing all the damage with Blessed Hammer and I'm using Falling Sword here for mobility and also to stun enemies. If you stun elite packs you do a shitload of damage because we've got Bane of the Trapped and we've got other abilities that increase damage to enemies that are stunned or if their movement speed is impaired. Stuff like that. So that's pretty awesome. The rest is all survivability and uh, regenerating your wrath. So it's pretty awesome stuff. You know, you've only got one primary damage dealer. The rest is just spamming a few buttons to either try and survive and regenerate your wrath but anyway we'll get into skills so you guys can see exactly what we're doing here we're using blessed hammer with limitless we're using falling sword with part the clouds which is what you saw sort of me teleporting around and stunning enemies iron skin with flash which doesn't just increase our survivability in our armor it also actually increases our movement speed if we get hit once iron skin is activated so pretty handy for running from elite pack to elite pack instead of using the steed charge we're using provide with too scared to run now, this is pretty good because when you taunt enemies it also slows slows them down and when they move slower it also obviously increases your damage based on Bane of the Trap and our other abilities that increase damage to stunned enemies Laws of Valor with critical to increase our uh, attack speed with Blessed Hammer and that increases our damage and Akarat's Champion with Profit we want to try and keep this up almost 100% of the time if possible if you have enough cooldown reduction you can probably just manage to get it 100% up uh, trust me if you can get this ability up 100% of the time you're gonna you're gonna absolutely kill it with this build it increases our survivability so damn much with passives we're using holy cause fervor finery and indestructible da -da 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 -da, indestructible uh, let's check out our gear now guys we're using the full seeker of the light set we're using the helm the shoulders, the chest piece, the gloves, the pants, and the boots. Now with the helm, we definitely want strength, vitality, and blessed hammer damage, preferably 15%, not preferably. Make sure you get 15%. I'm just being a tight ass and saving my uh, materials there. I I'm happy with 14 at the moment, but I will perfect it and get 15. With the chest piece here, there's not much you can do. Uh, you can't increase blessed hammer damage, so I've gone for falling sword damage. There's nothing else that actually relates to this build that you can change but definitely want strength and vitality anyway and falling sword damage at least it increases a little bit of uh, a little bit of damage there the shoulders we want strength preferably vitality and resist all elements but we definitely 100% want resist uh, resist we definitely want reduce cooldown of all skills by 8% 100% so damn important with this build we want as much cooldown reduction as possible the glove same goes you know you want strength vitality critically hit chance 
Uh, critically hit damage would be good instead of vitality as well, but we definitely want uh, cooldown reduction by 8%, 100%, hands down, must have it. These uh, unique looking braces here, Gabriel's Van braces are pretty handy. We want strength, we want vitality, critical hit chance, and another useful stat like maybe life per hit. There's not really many options to go with with these braces. Um, I would... I will be changing either lo probably life per hit for vitality and definitely want armor because this build can be pretty squishy. But yeah, look, I just got these braces recently. I've replaced my older set. Um, I think my older ones, with the legendary stat you see there, when your blessed hammer hits three or fewer enemies, 84% of its wrath cost is refunded. So that's huge. If your hammer doesn't hit that many enemies, you're regenerating wrath. And with 84%, I think my last braces only had uh, 75 or so. So I replaced them. I just didn't put vitality in, as you can see. But don't make this that mistake. Make sure that you enchant them perfectly before you even start. The belt is another unique belt. It's called Sacred Harness. And legendary stat for this is Judgment gains the effect of the Debilitate Rune and is cast at your landing location when casting Falling Sword. So you get an extra rune with that. Very nice. Uh, we definitely want Strength, Vitality, armor and there ain't much we can do with the other stat there where you can see slash the ring and amulet combo we're going with the end endless walk set so that includes includes the compass rose and the traveler's pledge amulet with the traveler's pledge you would definitely preferably want strength critical hit damage critical hit chance and then Definitely want reduced cooldown reduction of all skills by 8%. As you can see, got high crit damage there, 98%. Perfect. If I had critical hit chance, this amulet would be absolutely golden, but I don't. So make sure you obviously have to have a socket and you must have reduced uh, cooldown of all skills for this build. Cooldown reduction is just so important here, guys. We cannot give it up. The compass row is pretty shit here. I had to uh, change a stat to get the socket there for Bane of the Trapped. Ideally, you want critical hit chance, critical hit damage, and uh, cooldown reduction by 8%. So I haven't got an option to do anything anymore here because I needed the socket. And yeah, I, had to, I have to get a better Traveler's Pledge. But you guys make sure you get critical hit damage, critical hit chance, and cooldown reduction with strength. Freaking awesome. But yeah, it's just a little bit hard. I haven't had a, a good one drop just yet. I'm using Convention of Elements here. I've got Strength, Critical Hit Chance, and Reduced Cooldown of All Skills. Obviously, Crit Damage would be awesome too, but hey, we can't have everything. The Pants, we're using Strength, Vitality, and again, there's not really many other options you can go with with the other stat there, so I've just uh, put in Armor. There's nothing else that relates to this build. The boots, we're going with strength, vitality, I've left movement speed in there, and we definitely want blessed hammer damage by 15%. Again, I've only landed 14. That's good enough. We've only missed out by 1%, but try and get 15, guys. The weapons, uh, or the weapon and the shield, very important. Johanna's argument, legendary stat for this is, increase the attack speed and damage of Blessed Hammer by 100%. So 100% increased damage for Blessed Hammer. Absolutely huge. You must have this. Preferably an ancient, and definitely one with a uh, cooldown reduction by 8%. So it's, it's a lot to ask. It's hard to get an ancient with awesome stats plus cooldown reduction, but... Yeah, my hammer sucks, but as you can see, it's not an ancient, and I've, I've I was doing awesome damage. I absolutely killed it. I was melting down elites like you know within a second. So if you guys get an ancient and you choose to uh, focus on this build, then great, get your ancient, and away you go. The shield is guard of Johanna. Now the legendary stat for this is blessed hammer damage is increased by two hundred and thirty eight percent. For the first three enemies, it hits. So if you hit an elite first, you deal all that extra damage on the elite. It's amazing. So all you have to do is uh, use Falling Sword onto an elite pack, and bang, hit those elites, and you do all that extra damage. It's really easy, and definitely comes in handy. And again, I can't stress how important cooldown reduction is, so make sure that you have 8% cooldown reduction for the shield as well. Um, now having a look, is there anything we haven't gone through for the gear? I think we've gone through every piece, but we have to go through our gems. So for our amulet, we're using Gorgok of Swiftness, not just for the attack speed, but also to get that cooldown reduction per stack of Swiftness. Very, very handy, uh, especially for this build that's so reliant, not only on attack speed, but also mostly on cooldown reduction. The other one we're using is Bane of the Trap, like I mentioned. We've got a lot of abilities that stun enemies, especially uh, Falling Sword here. So once we use that, we trigger Bane of the Trap, and our damage is increased there by 34.8% immediately, just like that. 
and then we're using Bane of the Stricken. Again, pretty awesome for greater rifts, for rift guardians, and also for other enemies if you're, if you're going for higher greater rifts, you know. You can probably swap this out for something like uh, Esoteric Alteration if you're struggling with survivability, um, or any other gem that you want to experiment with. You know, this is just my opinion. There's so many things you can do. That's what I love about Diablo. There's no right or wrong answer. Just give it a go. This is just what I've put together, and this is like my opinion for this build and for the Blessed Hammer abilities, what you should be using um i've gone through the gems i think i've gone through pretty much everything here we'll go into canice cube in canice cube you definitely want the furnace 100 percent the furnace that's why you saw me just melting down those elites like nothing because damage is increased by 50 percent just for having the furnace in there god damn it armor hammer jammers 100 percent you want hammer jammers look at the freaking legendary stat there Enemies take 400% increased damage from a blessed hammer for 10 seconds after you hit them with a blind, immobilize, or stun. So when we use falling sword, as soon as we cast that or start spamming blessed hammer, we're dealing 400% increased damage for 10 seconds. Now this has a cooldown reduction of 30 seconds, but the more that we're using uh, blessed hammer, the the quicker the cooldown actually ticks off. So we can actually almost cast it every 10 seconds and we're all always going to be doing 400% increased damage. It's amazing. Uh, in Jewelry, I'm using Unity. You obviously want to make sure that your uh, follower, your Templar, or well, you're probably using a Templar, but if you're using another follower, make sure they have Unity equipped. Make sure they have... Uh, this relic with the legendary stat, your follower cannot die, and that way you're constantly getting that 50% damage reduction there. Very, very handy. And we'll go through Paragon points. With your core, you definitely want to increase your movement speed so you're capped at 25%, which I am, 14 plus 11, 25, everything else into strength. With offense, we want cooldown reduction first for this. I don't give a fuck. You want cooldown reduction. If you haven't capped your... Uh, all of the stats here go for cooldown reduction first then critical hit chance then crit damage and then attack speed defense we want resist all we want armor then we want life and life regen in that order of course i mean with utility we're going to go for resource cost reduction area damage life per hit and gold find in that order now i think i've gone through everything is there anything else that i've forgotten here I don't think so. You guys just have to go give it a go. Check this out. It's very, 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 very overpowered, this build, especially if you farm your better items and your ancients. Uh, if you've got any issues, let me know in the comments and I can help you out. Uh, you can always swap out Unity. If you find that you're not too squishy and you're not taking a lot of damage, you can swap out Unity for like the Obsidian Ring or just experiment. Like I said, there's no right or wrong answer. Just give it a go. Tell me what you think. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you keep coming back. And Banning 13 will see you again soon. And I'll be doing the set dungeon for the Seeker of the Light really, really soon. So make sure you stick around for that one.